The biggest question for Ohio State this year, positionally, might be what they get out of the quarterback spot. But big picture, it's are they finally going to beat Michigan? I think so. Jay Stevens, Locked On Buckeyes, joining me here on the show. Look, I, th- this is something that is going to be asked to Ryan Day several times throughout the year. You could even have questions about Michigan pop up when Ohio State isn't playing Michigan because as is usually the case, I expect Ryan Day to blast into oblivion everybody that they play this year other than Michigan and Oregon. So is that the biggest question for Ohio State this year? Is it just all about the Michigan factor, even more so than the October 12th meeting in Eugene against the Ducks? Absolutely. It's easily the biggest game of the year. That's not a knock to Oregon. Oregon's a really good football team, but Michigan is Michigan. They beat Ohio State three years in a row. It is called the game for a reason. It's Ohio State's biggest rival. And Ryan Day has to get this monkey off his back. He has to get over this hurdle. It's players like Denzel Burke and Jack Sawyer and Emeka Ebuka that are actually at Big Ten Media Days on Tuesday that are coming back to Ohio State. They have unfinished business. And part of that unfinished business is beating Michigan Thanksgiving weekend in 2024. So absolutely, that's the biggest thing with this team. And you can go 11-0. If you lose that game, it's just, just like the previous three seasons, And Ohio State and the players have a lot of looking inward saying, what is wrong with us? Why is this happening over and over? Yeah, and I I do think it's different this year because if Ohio State beats Oregon, loses to Michigan, goes 11-1, and the difference is they could still end up winning the national championship. That that could still be in in play there. But at home, they've opened, according to our friends at FanDuel, as a a 9.5 point favorite. That's a game that that you just got away. Like, there are just no excuses. The number of players that Michigan lost, are they going to be a good team? Yes, they have three players on the preseason Big Ten honorees list, which I find to be a strange list, personally. It's not a complete side of the ball. It's just 12 players. But Ohio State's got four of them. Michigan's got three. Oregon's got two. And then you got a handful of other players from the, the rest of the Big Ten team. So, it's it's natural to have that sort of expectation, but Ryan Day was asked about beating Michigan. Here's what he had to say. I think when when you look at you know year in and year out, the expectations are what they are, and and you know every year you have an opportunity at Ohio State. You have an opportunity to, to you know win every game, and and that's that's what the expectations are, and that's that's because of the great players and coaches that have come before, and we certainly understand that. And after every year, you got to identify. What are the things that have held you back from reaching your goals? Knowing that, you know, we want perfection and we want to win the game at the end of the season. And, um, you know, in particular, like last year, you know, what what, what was it that, you know, uh, prevented us from finishing off that last drive or getting off the field on defense? And, and uh, you know, why didn't we do that? And it's easy to say, well, it comes down to a player too, but that's not really the case. You know, we, we, we need to do is we need to leave no doubt. No doubt. Don't leave it to one play. Don't leave it to one call. Don't leave it to one stop. You know, leave no doubt when you're on the field and, and you know, we're not going to get into all the reasons or all the things that we've done to try to address that, to get that fixed. But uh, we have, we worked hard on that and we feel good about where we're at going into the season. That game, Jay, is always going to be hyped up. It's always going to be big. Now, Paul Feinbaum took it to the extreme because why not? That's that's what Paul's been doing lately. I talked about his USC take on yesterday's show, patently absurd, completely ridiculous. And he had another one here for a guy who is 39-3 and against the Big Ten as Ohio State's head coach. He said, if you lose to Michigan, you fire Ryan Day. Like, this is, this is nonsense, right? Like, the complete and utter nonsense? Yeah. Yeah. Because I was on the train at one, at one point saying, hey, if Ryan Day loses this game once again this year, he's gone. And then I had the realization he could still win the conference. He could win the national championship. He could end the year with a conference championship ring and trophy. Same for the national championship ring and trophy. And so as much as I do put the emphasis on that game, that's very, very important. If he turns that thing around the next week and wins the conference and about a month, month and a half later wins the whole thing, yeah, that, that lost those things. But he did something nobody has done at Ohio State since 2014, which was Urban Meyer's only national championship win at Ohio State. So Paul Feinbaum has been on this hot kick, hot take, streak lately i'm not a big fan of all the things that he says stay in the south bro stay down there be the top <laughs> of the south and let us up here in the midwest deal with the stuff going on at ohio state like lavar ball might say stay in your lane stay stay in your i, I mean i don't know the 
Did you see the interaction with him and Lane Kiffin at SEC Media Days last week? I, I, no, I heard the audio. Lane was, Kiffin going up there yeah. said, I don't, you know, you said this and that. You said Saban would retire. That didn't happen. I don't really know what you're good at. And I was like, oh, <laughs> that's, that's good. I, I say that's, that sarcastically about Paul Feinbaum. He has done a good job of making a name for himself, being very successful in this business. But also, like, the whole hot take thing. It just I gets would, old. I just, I, I, I get tired old. of it. Yeah, it's, it gets very old. If you have a hot take, make sure it's backed with some type of fact. And not just your own opinion. That's yeah. not just yeah. grabbing. Oh, I grab. Oh, day fired. Me. No, don't grab it. But don't even grab. if you're in the hypothetical realm, keep it within, you know, this galaxy of, of being reasonable or logical. Like not everything you disagree with is it is clickbait. But it, it's just it's just so it gets pretty tiresome. And like the, this, the standard at Ohio State is incredibly high. And Ryan Day talked about that as well. Well, I think we're all excited about the opportunity and we all see what could be, but uh, we also know that, you know, that's that's kind of wasted energy at this point. You know, we got to maximize, you know, the preseason. But at the same time, you know, you, you do. I mean, you get excited about this team. You know what's, what's possible. And then and there's a reason why, you know, these guys decided to come back and forego their opportunity in the NFL. And that's to go do that, exactly that. And, um, uh, and that's okay. I mean, these guys are proud and they're competitive and they, they want it and they think big and that's the way it should be. Uh, but at some point, we got to get back to work and, and you know, focus on what matters. National championship or bust, Jay? That was the way the question was posed because of what Denzel Burke said earlier today at Big Ten Media Days. Is that how you are viewing this season for Ohio State, given the players returning, Ryan Day, and how long he's been there without winning a national championship, which is an insane standard to hold, but like, okay, it's Ohio, it's Ohio State. The amount of NIL that's gone into this roster, you know, reportedly well over $20 million. Like, is it national championship or bust for the Buckeyes? Yes. And I'm only saying that because the players are saying it. My expectations for the team would be different if it wasn't for Denzel Burke saying it, I believe, in the spring, Natty or bust. And then you have Jack Sawyer, who is kind of saying the same thing. And you have the leaders in the clubhouse that are all saying Natty or bust, Natty or bust. Will Howard came to Ohio State to raise his draft stock, but to also win a natty. And so when you're saying that in practice, in the spring, in the summer, heading into fall camp, yeah, that is the expectation. That is because that's what you're saying. Ohio State every year has three goals. Beat Michigan, win conference, win the natty. That's not my standard. That's their standard. And based off their standard, that's what I need to hold them to because that's what they're holding them to. So, yes, absolutely, it's natty or bust expectations for the team because that's what they're saying inside the locker room i respect that sort of mentality i think it puts you know some pressure on yourself but if you if you feel like you're ready for it certainly ohio state they might have the best overall roster in college football outside of this team uh, down in athens georgia who i'm told have recruited at a very high level over the last few years but those reports are uh, wildly unconfirmed of course jay stevens locked on buckeyes jay appreciate the time as always Really enjoyed this bench. Let's do it again.